The chance for significant tornadoes is possible today, so we're not going to really have a super long intro. We're just going to get straight into it and figure out what exactly is happening with the weather here today. And let's go by taking a look at the satellite imagery. We can see a couple things here before we get into the convective outlook. We've got a lot of stuff here happening in the atmosphere. We got these two low pressure systems creating counterclockwise flow up here, one into portions of Ontario, the other one that's starting to develop along the Rockies now. And the first one up here in Ontario, this is what's creating or at least what did create our severe weather risk over for Iowa. It is now pushed off to the north and east and is creating a localized tornado threat of an apportions of upstate New York into Vermont. This is the uh, now going to be a winter aspect type of a storm if you're further north into portions of Canada. If you're further south, you guys are expected to get strong damaging winds, and that's the reason why if we take off the actual satellite imagery, you can see that you have a one out of five on the severe weather scale indicated in this dark green. So something to consider if you guys live over there towards portions of Burlington, Syracuse, Albany, and that general area over there. However, if we go a bit further down to the south and west, you can see a multitude of colors down here with dark green, yellow, and orange. If you're in the dark green, you're in the one out of five in the severe weather scale. If you're in the yellow, you're in the two out of five, and the orange, you're in the three out of five on the severe weather scale. The probabilities are as follows. You have a 10% chance for tornadoes indicated within a 25 mile radius. That does include places like Searcy up into Jonesboro, as well as Russellville, Winona, Poplar Bluff, even towards portions to the east of Branson, Missouri. That is where you guys could potentially get some activity. Harrison, Marshall, Mountain Home, West Plains, as well as Pocahontas and Sykeston over into Missouri. You guys can get some activity. Otherwise, outside of that, Fort Smith, Mena, Little Rock, as well as Paducah and Cape Girardeau, you guys are in a 5% chance for a tornado within a 25 mile radius. And then if we zoom out, you can see the giant 2% indicated in the green as well. So 2% in green, 5% in brown, 10% in yellow. As we switch over here to the hail risk, it is not very large. You can notice how it actually extends a little bit further into Oklahoma compared to the actual tornado risk. McAllister, Fort Smith, Fayetteville, Branson, you have a 15% chance of seeing one inch size hail or larger within a 25 mile radius. Otherwise, everywhere else is a 5% chance. And then of course, we also have our wind probability. You can see a lot more expansive and a lot more severe with our 5% in brown, 15 in yellow, and then 30% in red. So whatever probability you have, that is your chance of seeing 58 mile per hour wind gusts or greater within a 25 mile radius. And that's basically right over the areas of where the 10% chance for tornadoes was actually at. One last thing I wanna mention here is that this is our significant tornado risk here, localized over here within this silver risk, this is a 10% chance or greater of seeing EF2 tornadoes or stronger within a 25 mile radius. And this does look like it is more towards the Conway, Russellville, Marshall, Harrison, Mountain Home, Batesville, as well as the West Plains general vicinity into the Mountain Home general area. Now, I would not be surprised if you guys had a chance for significant tornadoes a little bit further west or a little bit further east of this risk, uh, specifically a little bit further west, I would say, uh, areas near Berryville, Branson, maybe even towards the Boonville uh, could potentially get some activity, maybe even Fayetteville as well uh, could potentially get into the uh, risk. And we'll show you that as the reason why in some of the models coming up, but still something to continue to monitor as this continues to progress. There is the chance for significant tornadoes here today, according to the convective outlook. So before we move along with our timings here, I want to go over what exactly makes this event tick. And that's more or less the wind shear aspect of the system. You can see our new low pressure system over here on the left hand side with this big circle right within here. And you have a lot of strong wind shear coming from the southwest to the north and east. The southwesterly or even southerly shear here that is coming from this low pressure system is expected to continue to move further and further towards the east. And you can see how that significant wind shear still is in place even as this continues to move on through. And right in front of that over here, that is where some of your showers and thunderstorms could start to form. And you have basically 500 millibar wind shear, your upper level wind shear here, which is about six kilometers above ground level uh, and upwards of, I'd say, 70 to 80 knots over here into the general area of where these actual supercells actually are at. And so you have some very good upper level wind shear here with this system. And at the same time with this system, we can take a look at the 850 millibar wind shear, which is about one kilometer. And you can already see the general flow here as it moves from the south to the north. Our southerly shear is starting to kind of rise and even spin in some of these areas here. But the big key factor to look at 
is the southerly shear coming from the Gulf of Mexico. This is bringing a lot of moisture here from the very moist Gulf of Mexico into these general areas to where there could potentially be some severe weather. And as this continues to move on through from Sunday morning into Sunday night, you can see the wind shear does amplify significantly, very significant low level jet that is in place over portions of Arkansas, Missouri, and the surrounding areas. And this is expected to continue, but you can also see the general flow of our low level jet. You can see these streamlines kind of just pull on through just like this. And that is a strengthening low pressure system that will more than likely continue to move on through and uh, gain traction as this heads off from Sunday into Monday. So definitely something to consider, especially as this moves on through from tonight into tomorrow. Now, I mentioned that there's a lot of moisture rising from the Gulf of Mexico, and it's already there for the most part. You can see how we have a lot of these yellow colors indicating 60 degree dew points and above, which is enough for favorable severe weather. And that'll continue to be the case, especially as it goes from morning into afternoon. Those dew points continue to be kind of congealed within a specific area. And then, of course, the showers and thunderstorms start to get caught along the boundary and start to push on through. So we have our cold front or our dry line that's starting to surge on now. We also have our warm front here, which is the reason why there isn't really a whole lot of extra activity that is occurring north of this actual line. Although you can see there's a little bit of a bowl here of uh, 50 to 55 degree dew points. In some instances, that is favorable for severe weather, and so I would continue to watch out for that as well, especially as that translates further and further. The North American model is very different from the HRRR model. As a matter of fact, if we go to comparison as to what the HRRR says compared to what the NAM 3 kilometer says within this exact moment, you can see a big difference here. The dew points are a little bit further to the north, and they are going to continue to kind of extend that way as time continues to progress. And uh, you can see how it continues to linger on further and further, whereas with the NAM, you can see how that kind of continues to stay down to the south for the most part until the line kind of really congeals and the actual thunderstorm activity from the straight line wind department does start to move on through. So it's one of those things to where we're going to have to continue to watch out for how this continues to progress. But for the most part here, for the actual significant tornado window, the dew points are relatively more significant down into portions of Arkansas than it is over into portions of Missouri. Now, there is some uncertainties with this event still, and I want to bring that to light here. You notice with the HRRR, there is really a lot of kind of fanning with these temperatures. There's not really anything with a sharp cutoff unless if you get further towards Texas, and that's where that severe weather risk exists down there. But if you take a look at the NAM 3 kilometer once again, you can see a very sharp cutoff that extends even all the way through into Missouri, you can clearly tell the difference between what is a part of the front and what is not. And so based off of that, all right, there is still some uncertainties in regards to how much cold air actually comes in behind and how far south this front actually heads towards. All right, this front might be a little bit too far north because of that. And so we're going to have to continue to watch as to how far this uh, warm front actually extends further north. That could be the determining factor as to who gets severe weather and who doesn't, especially with the severe risk. So something to continue to monitor is that there is a lot of uncertainty for portions of southern Missouri in regards to the beginning of the supercellular activity with your significant tornadoes. But even after that, all right, afterwards, you guys are definitely going to get some severe weather in regards to your strong damaging winds. You can see how that starts to figure itself out a little bit more. And by that time period, that's going to be more of a strong damaging wind threat. And we'll show you here with uh, some of the models and the uh, simulator radar here in a bit. So last but not least, we're going to want to take a look at the convective available potential energy numbers, which is basically the displacement between warm air rising, cold air sinking. The greater the displacement, the more the energy, the higher the chance for thunderstorms to either form or sustain. So you want about 1,500 to 2,000 joules per kilogram of cape in order for you to get that constant severe weather activity that you would want if you were to try and find it. And you do actually have that. If you take a look at the bottom right hand corner, you see the maximum amount of Cape is over 2000 joules per kilogram. That is also localized over portions of central Arkansas, and that will eventually move off further and further towards northern Arkansas. You can see how the number actually does rise as this gets closer and closer towards the late afternoon to the early evening stages. And of course, as it moves into nighttime, the numbers start to decrease more and more. Forget about what the bottom right hand says. It's about what happens over there in Arkansas, which is where your actual weather is going to occur. So just uh, more or less, the energy continues to deplete as this moves more and more. 
and then uh, it's going to be more of a strong damaging wind risk because you don't have enough energy for thunderstorms to you know actually get organized for tornadoes and stuff like that so that's the main thing there with this event here so first off i'm going to talk about everybody and then i'm going to get into the specifics with the tornado risk and how there is a bit of a bust potential here for this event here today uh but let's get to that a little bit later on uh first off you can see a widespread swath of snow here off into portions of ontario and quebec as well as even into portions of the Great Lakes. So that is your snowstorm, or at least your low pressure system that moved on through that we talked about in the beginning of the video. That'll basically move on through and become your warm front. Of course, your cold front will come in behind this. And this is your open warm sector right over here. You can see all those thunderstorms moving from south to north. That southerly shear from your low level jet is bringing a lot of that moisture down from south to north. And then this is when things start to become really interesting. Elongated line here with some discrete or semi discrete supercells, I should say within some of these areas here of Arkansas into Missouri. And then that'll continue to progress. That'll become even more messier. And then you can see an elongated line or at least two elongated lines start to form here. And that'll be more of your strong damaging wind risk that will ensue more than likely towards the 10 to 11 o'clock hours and push on through into central Arkansas as well as further on through past that. You can also see how that continues to push on further and further. And by Monday, you can see how this line starts to push on through the deep south into the Appalachians and that'll basically be a strong damaging wind risk more than a tornado risk as that moves on through. On the backside of all this, there is expected to be some snow for portions of Ontario and Quebec. So places like Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, you guys could get a lot of uh, activity over there. Not exactly a significant amount of snow, but you guys could get some activity within your areas. Now, if we were talking about how much I'd say 10 to 15 centimeters is possible until you get towards portions of Quebec City and even further off into northeastern portions of Quebec and northern New Brunswick. So I'd watch out for that as well. And then in regards to the snowfall in northern Maine, you guys could potentially get in upwards of, I'd say, five to eight inches, maybe even more if you're right along the border towards the portions of northern Maine. And then other areas here, uh, like, you know, Kansas into Missouri, Iowa, Iowa just had tornadoes and now they're getting snow and stuff like that. So uh, one to three inches of snow, maybe even three to five inches of snow in northern Missouri is possible as well. And then as this continues to see this giant swath of blue that extends from Chicago all the way over towards uh, areas north of Detroit into areas over into Ontario. And that entire swath right there is about three to five inches of snow. So now let's get into the specifics with this. Um, this is... A really interesting event and the reason being as to why I say this is because I paused it on this image for a reason and you notice how close together all these showers and thunderstorms actually are they're kind of practically right on top of each other all these reds all these yellows you know all the red stuff that's the individual cells that are trying to mature into supercells which are you know big thunderstorms that could produce tornadoes and you see how they're mostly right on top of each other and so that's the uh, one main concern here from this event standpoint. Uh, it's going to be like that as time continues to progress. And I'll backtrack here a little bit. You notice how some of these thunderstorms actually are, you know, a lot smaller and they're kind of displaced from each other a little bit. They're more discreet. And so this opportunity for it to become discreet in the early afternoon hours, sometime around one to four, all right? One to four is the uh, time period into which you guys could get your potential for significant tornadoes. But then after that, once it starts to get towards like the six o'clock, seven o'clock hours, that's when things start to become a lot more messier. Everything starts to congeal more and more. And because of that, because of that, uh, there is a bust potential for this event to where you could have a supercell that forms and then you can have a thunderstorm that smacks right into it and knocks it all out completely. And so uh, you know, of course, there is still a chance for tornadoes, even when cells merge, but there's a small window of opportunity to where you can get a weak tornado. But if you're talking about significant tornadoes, this is your bust potential right here. If no thunderstorms form between 1 and 4 p.m., even 1 and 5 p.m., uh, or no organized supercells form, your window of opportunity is about to be slammed shut quickly uh, in regards to your actual uh, significant tornado potential, unless if a thunderstorm could get out by itself and actually can, you know, take the moisture for itself and fight for dominance that way. So that's the one thing here. You notice with the HRRR, it's uh, relatively discreet here for some of this instance over towards uh, four o'clock into five o'clock. You notice how you have some of these thunderstorms that are out by itself. 
this is favorable for, you know, significant supercells to develop and even become, you know, tornadoes in the long run. So it's just something to notice here with the HRRR. If we switch over to the NAM, uh, you notice how as we translate from the afternoon into the evening, nothing forms. All right. Nothing forms out in front of this big line. That's the uh, that's the bust potential here for you guys is that if nothing forms during that time frame, you'll just have your big line of storms that'll push on through. That'll be your strong damaging wind risk and that'll be it. Uh, you guys could even get some, uh, you know, brief tornadoes along the line as this moves on through. But that's your bust potential here for today. If nothing forms out in front of the line, it'll be a strong damaging wind risk. On the other hand, we're going to take a look at a model that I like to look at for some of the worst case scenario type uh, situations. This also gets some instances correct in regards to what uh, some storms could do. And uh, this system here, uh, well, this model, which kind of gets uh, discrete cells pretty well for the most part, uh, has one right here. Big supercell that forms off into the northwestern portions of Arkansas into southwestern portions of Missouri. So if you guys live over in some of these areas, you know, that's the reason why I said the significant tornado risk could be a little bit further towards the west as well. Uh, if something forms within the, uh, within that environment, could potentially get a significant tornado within your area. But then as this moves on through, you can see that window of opportunity is slammed shut. You get more discrete storms that just kind of pile on top of each other. And it's just this line that kind of pushes on through. So it's, uh, it's something to watch out for, for sure. We have two models that say uh, that there could be something that forms somewhere over here uh, near Fayetteville or just to the east of Fayetteville uh, over towards uh, maybe even portions of Russellville could get some activity as well. But otherwise, uh, most of the models are uh, kind of a little bit half and half with this event. We have a couple uncertainties to, you know, just to remind everyone of is that how far north will this boundary extend is the real question could the boundary be a little bit further south so that portions of missouri could not even get even this the, the uh, tornado risk will the uh, actual thunderstorms be discreet enough for tornadoes to actually form will that window of opportunity be just uh, just enough for significant tornadoes to form up here into northern portions of arkansas and southern portions of missouri as well as if it is how much time do they actually have for them to actually undergo the process of it becoming mature so all those questions will be, uh, you know, answered later on when ground truth actually occurs with these storms. Uh, but otherwise, that is as much as I can do here for today. Uh, if you guys live within these areas here, you need to definitely be weather aware. Highly recommend, you know, I won't be live today. All right. I got other obligations and I'm sick. So, you know, if I could, I would live stream today. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, with me being sick and with me having prior obligations, I have to put those first, and so that's exactly what I'm going to do. Tomorrow, however, there is a risk for severe weather. Uh, if we pull it up here in a second, you can see how there is a risk for severe weather with a 2 out of 5 on the severe weather scale in this yellow. Of course, there's also a 2% chance for tornadoes across some of these areas, and that's mainly because of the strong damaging winds that will move on through. If this gets upgraded to a 5%, I might actually live stream, but I'd have to talk to some people and try and work things around and stuff like that. But this is more a strong damaging wind threat more than anything. So I may not live stream within this day and uh, we may just upload a video on Monday night regardless. But uh, still, if you guys live within any of these areas, all right, we're going to go back over here to the actual convective outlook. If you live within any of these areas here in the yellow and the orange, you need to watch out for the most part for some uh, strong damaging winds and the potential for tornadoes. And uh, with that being said, that's going to be it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications. Please share this with as many people as possible, all right? Copy the link to the video, share this with friends and family and on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all sorts of other areas. And uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Follow me on social media if you want to stay up to date with all the information that I could provide. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate everyone who was a part of my live stream last night, and I will catch you guys later on. So peace out, everyone.